Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Wright Burroughs' famous book. What is it? It looks remarkably like a dead leopard lying on a dead man. Yes, Professor. And do you see what the man is clutching? Oui, Monsieur Clayton. It is the solar helmet of Monsieur Philodier. It is for Philander's son. Wait, Monsieur le Professeur. Do not approach. It is possibly a trap. Monsieur Clayton, if you will walk back, well, comme ça, hey, Monsieur le Professeur will walk in this way. Mais on garde, Monsieur. My men will first encircle this spot to see that there are no poisoned arrows or spears pointing to the place where Monsieur's helmet is. And I will go first. Aha, monsieur! It is for the first time that we have the Lady Luck with us. What is it? Uh, yes, quickly, Darno. Is it... Is it Philander? But no, it is the witch doctor. One of our shots must have killed him. But what's he doing with Philander's son? And Philander's binoculars. The witch doctor, he was probably going to make medicine against us by using these things of Monsieur Philander. Well, I can't see much to get enthusiastic over, except we killed a witch doctor. But, monsieur, it is very important. This is proof positive that at the time the witch doctor was killed, Monsieur Philander was still alive. But how, Darno, I cannot see any definite co- connection Neither with that. Neither can I. If Monsieur Philander were dead, this witch doctor would not carry these things. It is for the purpose of tribal ceremony that the witch doctor wants the helmet and the glasses. Well, probably you're right, though I fail to understand. I think, in fact, I'm sure I understand. Somewhere I've read that these primitive people make images of the person or persons they wish to destroy and then proceed by concerted effort to pray them to death. That is correct, Monsieur le Professeur. And in addition, to make their medicine more potent, they gather whatever they can of the victim's belongings, surround the uh, image with them, and the victim's death, I give you my word, is assured. All very ridiculous, I'm sure. And not helping us to rescue Philander. Ah, Monsieur Creighton is young, uh, pardon, young to Africa. When Monsieur has lived here as long as I have, Ten years. He will not sneer at the black magic. But great Scott, Otto, you're not trying to tell me that we, grown, civilized men, are going to determine our actions and reactions, such as in this philander capture, by what you choose to call black magic? Ha! It's ridiculous. Preposterous. Ridiculous? Preposterous? Uh, hardly, monsieur. But, tiens, we waste time. Allô? Allô? Uh, 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 don't you think we ought to take this, uh, this witch doctor's costume? Scanty, I admit, but it might be useful. It is but one more thing to carry. It is nothing. Take it. Come, mes enfants. Forward. En avant. In another part of the jungle, Tarzan, crouching on the low-hanging branch of a tree, watches the file of blacks with their prisoner approaching. Now the first black is just a few feet away. Tarzan braces himself. Now he's throwing the rope. It's a perfect throw. The leading black is caught in the loop. Instantly, Tarzan jerks the rope and begins pulling the terrified, struggling savage into the tree. The other savages stand petrified, talking excitedly. Now Tarzan has the horror-stricken savage in his grasp. He struggles futilely. A fearful wail and the savage becomes limp. Tarzan raises him high and with a mighty thrust heaves his victim upon the heads of the excited savages below him. The blacks, excited before, are now thunderstruck. Who and what is this unseen power? They mumble, wail, and utter weird chants to their gods to protect them. The bravest savages begin circling the tree, peering upward. Tarzan, hidden from view, draws an arrow from his quiver. Slowly, deliberately, he aims at one of the boldest blacks. The bowstring twangs, and the huge savage shrieking falls. Again and again, Tarzan's arrows with deadly accuracy find their marks. Bedlam breaks loose, and the remaining savages, wailing with fright, flee in consternation, leaving Philander behind them. Tarzan quickly descends. Now he's above Philander. He bends down. What was that? Tarzan listens. A half-smile crosses his face as he recognizes the voices of the Tarmangani. With a few swift strokes, he cuts Philander's bonds and, leaping from the lower branches of a tree, is gone. That noise! Quickly, monsieur! Almost sounds as if we caught up with him. Uh, By Philander. Jove! Look there! Philander! Kill it, Philander! Oh, Let me get that gag out of your mouth. Oh, what a relief. Hey, uh, down, no. Yeah, the flash. Here it is, monsieur! Oh, uh, now, now, don't try to talk, Philander. Uh, swallow this. Uh, that, that's right, now. Uh, 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 now, uh, drink. Uh, what, oh, what a relief. Uh, what, what has happened? 
Where did he go? Did you see him? Oh, what are you talking about? Who go where? The, uh, the, uh, the blacks, you mean? No, the jungle man. The man who rescued us from the lion. You saw him? As well as I could, lying there on my back. I saw enough to convince me. Uh, monsieur is nervous, distraught. Perhaps if monsieur tried to tell from the beginning. Uh, uh, yes, Kenny, calm yourself now. T uh, tell your story from, from the time that you wandered off. Archimedes Q. Porter, there's a limit. Wandered off. Indeed, I was dragged off. Well, then do tell us about it. I was asleep, just a few feet from Clayton there. Something, I don't know what it was, awakened me. I felt a sort of choking feeling. I put my hand to my throat, felt a string, and just as I moved, it tightened. I tried to call, found myself getting giddy for lack of breath, and then everything went black. Uh, and then, Skinny, what? Go on, go on. When I came to regain, that is, partially regain my faculties, I was being carried along by some blacks. How long I'd been unconscious, I had no idea. Suddenly there was a halt. The blacks dropped me. And from the ground where I lay helpless, I saw a black actually rise from the trail and disappear in the foliage above. The blacks excitedly huddled together beneath the tree, and immediately the one that disappeared in the tree was hurled with terrific force on top of them. They became wildly excited. Then I saw many of them who were nearest the tree drop with arrows in their chest. And then with the most awful sound, the remaining blacks fled leaving me. Before I could really collect my senses, it happened so suddenly, so quickly, this amazing jungle person released my bonds and vanished. My ten lords of birth, that is astounding. I should like to meet this person. I have not the slightest doubt that you will do so, Darno. Uh, ah, Philander, uh, here is your sun helmet and your... Glasses? Uh, yes. Why, yes, how, where did you find them? Uh, on the trail, while we were following you. And uh, now, uh, Monsieur Darno, uh, much as I would like to, to push on to the village, I, I think that poor Philander requires a little rest. Not me, Archimedes. I am ready now. Uh, that is the spirit that will win. But consider, we will require to conserve our strength. So let us camp here till they break. Paris, mes enfants! Well, let's make a shot for the rest of this plan. Affect the family. Leave over to While Philander has been describing his experiences, Tarzan has returned to the platform in the trees where Jane tremblingly awaits him. Oh, my skin. I thought you were never coming back. Back? White skin, come back quick. Perhaps you thought it was quick, but to me, it seemed years. Oh, I was so frightened, alone. Alone? Alone? Yes, alone. Well, I suppose I'll have to explain that word. While Jane tries to think of a way to explain alone, Tarzan tries equally hard to think how to explain that the Tom and Ghani are safe. Jane breaks off a few twigs, lays them on the platform, and passes her hand over them. White skin. Many. 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 Many? Yes. Picking all the twigs up but one, Jane points to it. Alone. 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 Tarzan nods his head, then points to Jane. White skin, go. Jane, alone. White skin, come back. Jane, many. <laughs> well, it's not what Daddy or Mr. Philander would consider expert syntax. But then I understand. Under... understand? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. Jane nods yes. her head yes. several yes. times yes. as yes. she repeats the yes. word. Yes. Tarzan follows yes. suit. Yes. Then Jane shakes her head from side to side. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no. No, no. <laughs> yes, you've got it, White Skin. White Skin, go. Jane, frightened. Yes? White Skin, come back quick. Jane, frightened? No. <laughs> well, for a limited vocabulary, you express yourself wonderfully. But enough school for today. We ought to be asleep. Asleep? Asleep? Yes. Sleep. Look. Jane closes her eyes, places her cheek on the palm of her hand, and pretends to sleep. Jane, sleep. Yes. White skin, sleep. Yes. Jane Porter seeks her resting place in the little leafy alcove Tarzan has built for her, while the ape-man stretches himself on the platform. 
With the departure of the blacks, the jungle slowly returns to normal. New mother lion leaves his lair to stalk his prey in the tall grasses. Santor, the elephant, returns to the water hole. Baby monkeys release their clutching grasp on their mother's shaggy coats and excited chattering dies down to sleepy whimpers. Far in the distance, Dango, the hyena, howls to the moon and waits for the half-devoured kill of some worthier jungle beast. While Tarzan, lord of the jungle, sleeps before Jane's resting place. A loyal bodyguard, a foe to be feared, a sentinel against all intrusions.